Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series and in today's episode we will learn how to build Angular apps. So far, if you see, we have been learning, we have been developing, we have been testing our Angular application but we never got a chance to deploy or build it. Today is that episode where we will learn how to build, how to compile our Angular applications. Welcome back, my name is Sridhar. I have over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer. I'm here to share my knowledge with you all on the modern web technologies. I'm also here to learn from you all. So during the course of this tutorial series, if you have any doubts, any queries, just ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. I'm putting in a lot of hard work in bringing these tutorials for you friends. So I'll, re I'll really appreciate if you can support me by subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. Thank you in advance. Now there are around 75 tutorials that I've posted on Angular 9 in the full playlist. So the playlist link is in the description box below. If you really want to learn and master Angular 9, this is the series for you. Do check it out. Like I said, the link is in the description box below. So we are learning on the mini series on build and deployment. Uh, in the previous episodes, we have learned the basics about uh, what is build, what is deployment, how Angular looks at it, what is ahead of time compilation, how does it play a role in build itself. So today we will learn how to build and deploy a single app. Um, very interesting topic. A lot of you have been asking and waiting for it. So I hope you uh, find it useful. Let's get started. So Angular, um, like in the previous um, tutorial, we learned that Angular will use ahead of time compilation by default in Angular 9 onwards, uh, which is what will be used to compile the Angular metadata, the templates, the, the TypeScript code into a language or code which browser understands, which is our JavaScript. Now, whenever we want to uh, build our or compile our application, we must be in the same working directory the one that we want to generate. And then once we are there, we have to run a command using Angular CLI. The command is ng build. Okay. It's not ng build command. It's just ng build. Uh, so when you do that, it will build that application. Now we can pass some customize and pass various options to this. We'll see now how to do that. But just to understand, uh, we can pass different things like base, re, href, AOT, uh, output path, prod, true, index, deploy URL, etc. So these are some of the commonly ones used, but there are other also which can be uh, definitely used. So remember that mostly this would be in your pipelines, right? So whenever we talk about a real time project, uh, you never actually build it in locally and then deploy it. It never happens. Um, if it's happening, that means it's not a real project. Uh, this is one of the common questions that is often asked. Uh, how what was your build process right right so all of this like build deploy all of this should be in your pipelines uh, when i say pipelines it should be in the um, your build and deploy pipelines usually built on bitbucket or github or stash so yeah let's see how to build an app so first okay so this is the notes from the previous okay let me open it here if we want to make some notes, right? So I have a project here that we are working on. It's called one conversion. So let's navigate into it. We are already inside it. Okay, very good. And the command we will run to build or compile our application is ng build. Okay, so now you see here dist folder. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete it so that you see it again, right? So now I'm just running the command ng build. So what this will do now is it will compile the application. It will convert it into JavaScript and give the output into the dist folder here by default. Let's see that now. It's taking a while, but in the meantime, please do take a time to hit the like button on this video to appreciate and support me. Thank you. Alrighty. So now it says generating ES5 bundles. You see that? This is nothing but it's converting the code into JavaScript now, right? So now remember that whenever we build, right, we use the command 
ng build okay that's the command we use to build it now right so we use the command ng build and now you see it says converting code and giving output in es5 right and if you see here it is all js files that it has generated you will see main.js you will see styles dot uh, js es5 you will see vendor you will see uh, scripts.js so you see there are so many files that it generates and remember that always the default folder where it will generate the code is dist right if the folder does not exist it will create one and copy the files inside it if the folder exists it will override the existing files or it will replace it will replace and override the existing files okay so now let's see so you see here there is a dist folder now it has created assets invoices runtime js it has created all the so it has created modules for the modules that we created it created all the different things that we want right so you see so this is how you have built the application now whenever we say deploy right whenever we say deploy the app right so deployment is nothing but copying this dist folder into the hosting website folder right a good example is if you have a local host or as aws or s3 bucket or xure folder or gcp wherever you want to host it you will have a hosting folder right domain name right let's say if you have a domain name which says http myproject.com right so let's say you have this domain name so usually we will go into the c panel and you'll go to file manager and go to root and you will copy and paste this dist copy and paste this dist folder okay so that is what it means by deployment this is manual deployment the one that we are talking about right copy pasting pasting is manual deployment okay remember no one does it no one does it and it's not really encouraged right it's not really encouraged it doesn't make sense that you use uh, a modern framework you use a build tooling and then you do a manual deployment it doesn't work that way um, automatic deployment automated automated deployment okay so automated deployment that's what um, it will have it will be defined by the commands and will be part of the build or deployment pipelines usually in bitbucket uh, stash or github right so this is what um, this is how we build this is how we deploy so you see this folder now it doesn't have to be this way right um, you can also specify the output directory and output directory equal to you can say I want it by the name conversion right so okay unknown option output directory okay sorry it's output path output path alrighty let it again it will build it again so every time we do it will compile to check if there was any new changes if there are any errors so it will create 
the separate files for each of the modules for each of the script main styles vendors etc and give us the output so again it will give us so now you see there is a folder called conversion right so we can we can specify the output directory name as a as an option in command line right using hyphen hyphen output path now this is done now i had covered when i covered the routing part i had covered a tutorial on base uh, href if you don't recollect i suggest please check out please check out that tutorial it's in the playlist a uh, very important concept um, important concept and 90% uh, deployments fail due to due to wrong settings in base href right so if you are working on unless you are deploying onto root uh, if there are any slash folder subfolders subdomains it's extremely important that you give the correct base ref if you don't give that it will screw up your uh, deployment so it's important again you can pass it using the um, option and say base href uh, so let me show you first what the base href is of the generated output so if i go to index.html you see that base href is slash right now if i can say ng build and i'll say base base href equal to i'll say http localhost colon 7070 right so now what i'm doing is initially it was only slash right but now the entire angular application will be built all their internal links will be rebuilt with the new url which is localhost 7070 so when now i will see it in the dist folder since i have not given the output path i will see that is no see it has generated now if you say go to base href you see href is equal to localhost 7070 right so yet another important very very important concept uh, often people ignore it uh, thinking that it's not of important but whenever you are giving a url it's extremely important to take make sure you pass correct base href right um, make sure you don't make that mistake similarly deployment url uh, another another catchy area so make sure just like base href you can deploy uh, you can mention the deploy url and as a param and you can give the new url where you want it to be deployed right so those are the things that i think these are the params that you have to pass uh, or rather these i would say for debug purpose so whenever you build an application and you're ready to deploy if something is not working these are the common things that you should look where you would have uh, done it wrong right uh, before i leave one last thing i'll explain which is the index right so we know that any and every server and every server thinks that by default um, the the default uh, landing page uh, should be index which is which is correct which is correct uh, in most cases uh, but in in some cases like you don't want the user to be on index but you want him to be directly on login page right something like that if you have a use case you can always mention uh, you can say that the index file that is a starting file should be your so you can pass an option like ng build hyphen hyphen index equal to login right so that way you are telling it that start with login uh, page itself not with index so this is a yet another important thing if you want to some certain page to be the default on your server and not the index page all right so that being said i think uh, that's how we build a a single application uh, in the next episode i'll show you how to build if you have multiple projects uh, in your repo how do you build a specific project um, and that would be the last of the 
at least this particular series uh, before we start the CRUD operations and learn about uh, details in terms of practical live projects. See you in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for appreciating me. Thank you again.